Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite bacteria, bifidobacteria, and we're going to see an absolute explosion of bifidobacteria from a combination of HMO, human milk oligosaccharides, and a single dose of a bifido probiotic. So I'm going to be looking at the uh, case study of two different infants as well as my own results. And this is infant number one. And in ev every case, you'll see a combination of some of the earlier tests were done by Ombre and more recent tests done by Tiny Health. So that's going to be consistent throughout. And you see the green line is the bifidobacterium. That's the total bifido um, in each sample. And then Bacteroides fragilis, uh, a um, Bacteroides uh, B fragilis in general in small amounts can be healthy, especially uh, early in infancy. But when you get too much like this infant has, 40, almost 60%, it, is, uh, it becomes pathogenic and, and harmful uh, to the infant. And then B infantis. And B infantis is actually a subspecies. It's Bifidobacteria longum subspecies infantis. And we're going to be specifically looking at a, a strain of B infantis, which is has a, the designation of EVC001. Now you see a very interesting thing here, uh, the inverse relationship between B fragilis, which is the, the pathogenic one, and total bifido and, and also B infantis. And um, the, as the bifido rises, the B fragilis drops. And it, it's very, very consistent there. What's happening is, as there's more bifido in the gut, that produces lactic acid. It lowers the pH of the colon, which the B fragilis does not like. So it starts to, to kill off that B fragilis. Now, in this case, um, B, so when I show on, on the ombre, ombre is not able to detect below the species level. So B infantis, as I said, is a subspecies, so it cannot see uh, B infantis. So the, the B infantis under the gray section for ombre is actually just B longum. Uh, that's, that's as specific as it can get. But then when you get into the tiny health, tiny health can not only see B infantis, but the exciting part and the reason to make in this video ultimately is because recently tiny health has able to change their uh, way that they can see their, their bacteria. And they are able to detect, to detect down to the strain level now. So uh, we are seeing EVC001 in, in three uh, of these uh, people. And interestingly, as far as we know, this is th these three people, uh, two infants and myself, are the first general consumers, in other words, those that were not involved in a research project that have detected this particular strain of EVC001 in their gut. So sort of uh, interesting, a little bit of groundbreaking news here. And in this case, because the B fragilis was so high and the bifido was so low, the practitioner for this infant put uh, this infant on this probiotic, the uh, EVC001, and we saw the good results. And I, I have detailed videos about this, uh, two of them actually on the Layer Origin uh, YouTube page, if you want to look at those. So I won't go into great detail other than to say that uh, you see where the supplementation, two weeks of a daily dose of this probiotic and uh, subsequent testing, and then finally able to actually see the EVC001 uh, in the sample. And, and again, you, you see that the, the EVC001 makes up almost the entire total bifido. So uh, it's at the top there, about 80% bifido and about 76% of that is the EVC001. Moving on to infant number two. Uh, now there's only two samples here. And again, ombre and tiny health. And the, this infant and the ombre test had basically undetectable bifido, which is not good for an infant. Normally in the first month, you're going to see a healthy infant with 60 to 80% uh, bifido. So undetectable bifido is, is not a good sign. 
And again, the, the B fragile specter already is fragile, very high at almost 50%. But then um, you see after dosing with EVC001, both total bifido just absolutely skyrocketed. And the vast majority of that is the EVC001. The B fragilis is not as low as in the first infant, but it's my opinion that it's probably because we, we took an early sample. And if you sampled it now, several months later, I'm almost confident. And, and I imagine this, uh, this uh, child will get a, a, a test at some point. You will see that B fragilis go down even further. Now, also in both cases, I forgot to mention, uh, you see HMO at the top there. Both infants are receiving HMO through uh, breast milk. And HMO is the third leading, the third largest salt ingredient besides water in breast milk. And it is there as a soluble fiber to do nothing but feed the bacteria in the infant's gut. The, the infant uh, and any, uh, any human cannot digest HMO and it's there to feed the bacteria. And generally, of course, we want them to feed the good bacteria. And the wonderful thing about EVC001 is that it consumes all types of HMOs. And in, in breast milk, there is up to 200 different types of HMO and uh, it can consume all of them. And it, it voraciously consumes them. So it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary to have HMO to feed this EVC001. But by far, and among these other amazing statistics, in my opinion, by far the most noteworthy is the fact that this infant only received one dose of the EVC001. Now you would say, why would you just give one dose? Well, this uh, infant was started on the probiotic and then received some uh, a recommendation to, because the infant was only about six weeks old at the time, go ahead and hold off, you know, see if, uh, if things might correct on their own, retest, and then evaluate if you want to go back on EVC001 at that point. So just give it a little more time. Infants are very young. So after one dose, the, the, the parents got that news and stopped the infant. So we had no idea how this was going to work out. So just amazing that it was, only took one dose and it persisted. And my guess is like in the prior infant, it persisted after stopping supplementation for many, many months. And research has shown that that is the pattern with EVC001. Once it is seeded in the gut, as long as it has HMO to consume, it will continue to, uh, to remain at some level. Now, these are my personal results. And uh, I was very happy to uh, at one point have almost 8.5% bifidobacteria. And that was a combination of several soluble fibers. Then I added HMO um, after the, the 1221 test and my bifido levels were quite high. Uh, in a prior video, I talked about why they crashed so significantly, but uh, a year and a half later, so a couple years later, I'm down to almost undetectable levels of bifido. So I thought, you know, EVC001 works really well on infants. Um, I'm going to try this on myself. Honestly, it works so well on the infants. I was a little bit uh, concerned that it could work too well, you know, that, that, you know, maybe I'd get too much bifido. Well, that didn't happen, but I, I did get a nice little rise there. Um, the, now what I'm calling to, to clarify here, what I'm calling the EVC001 is uh, B infantis. Now, again, in the, in the ombre tests, uh, it can only detect B longum, but when you get into the tiny health, that actually now becomes B infantis. And why I put a question mark by the EVC001 is the fact that my total B infantis was about 0.6%. And at this stage, at least, tiny health is not able to determine with absolute certainty that below 1% is actually that specific strain. But in my opinion, the fact that I had zero uh, B long before and the fact it went up that high, um, I have all confidence that that is that particular strain. And it also seemed to ignite the rest of my bifido, which now rose up to a total of 2%, which is way more than most uh, adults uh, will have. And 
Uh, also wanted to mention that I was uh, supplemented for seven days. Uh, in my case, and by the way, none of this is medical advice. I'm not telling what to do. I'm just describing some of these results. But I supplemented for seven days. I took one packet. It was actually 13 doses. One packet morning and evening along with uh, two, uh, sorry, four grams of HMO morning and night. And then after I was done supplementing uh, with that for seven days, I reduced, so I'm no longer taking the probiotic. I reduced my HMO to two grams uh, morning and night. Uh, and the typical dose uh, of HMO, I take uh, HMO uh, powder from a layer origin. And the typical dose is is uh, two two grams uh, what once a day, and I was taking it two grams uh, twice a day. And uh, now going back to the infants, this this is also interesting. A little bit smaller here on your screen, but they're out of the uh, five most common uh, types of bifidobacteria between the two infants. Four out of the five were identical. And then if you move down into the strain levels, you see that all, these are all strains of B infantis, and you see the EVC is yours or one of both. They are identical, all four strains. And so much so that some of the folks at, at Tiny Health asked me if these happen to be from the same mom. So I, I happen to have a relationship with, with, with both families and uh, they have some relation to one another, but they definitely are not from the same mother. So uh, it's interesting to think if they are that way because of the family relationship, but it, it's amazing that uh, it, the strains are identical and the other bifida are almost identical. So I think uh, this is just some fascinating uh, results from this. And just to summarize, I have been taking pure HMO probiotic powder from Layer Origin for about two and a half years. And it has been the core of what um, of my soluble fibers and my feeding of my gut. And uh, I, I think it's a, a great product. Uh, but to also mention the other companies mentioned here, Avivo, they're the ones that produce the EVC001 strain. And then Tiny Health is the ones uh, the, this uh, newer, relatively newer gut testing company. And the only ones that uses uh, shotgun metagenomics where it enables them to see all the way down to the strain level, which I think is extremely beneficial, especially um, in infants uh, uh, when you're uh, wanting to know what is there. And then finally, I just want to mention my podcast I started last fall, the Resilient Biome Podcast. And I've interviewed last uh, month, a couple of months ago, the CEO of Tiny Health. Uh, next week, I'm going to be interviewing a representative from Avivo and talking about, again, the strain EVC-01 and all of the um, interesting things to go with that, including uh, the person I'm interviewing before she worked for Avivo was a NICU nurse. So she has firsthand understanding of how these probiotics can be very beneficial to premature infants that are in the NICU. So that's uh, all I have for today. So thanks for watching.